Good day, YouTube, and welcome to another episode of the Albino Rhino Beer Review. Today we are drinking a beer that uh, just launched recently here, well, all over the country, basically. Uh, and that's from the Trailer Park Boys. It's the Trailer Park Boys Freedom 35. Freedom 35. Um, so, what am I looking at here? Uh, I'm looking at a beer that was contract brewed by uh, North American Craft, who are uh, distributors here in Ontario and uh, distribute from what I understand around the country uh, but they are also the guys that run uh, Double Trouble Brewing which is known for uh, Fire in the Sky, Fire in the Rye, sorry, Prison Break, uh, Hops and Robbers amongst uh, uh, Grow a Pear Cider amongst a uh, few other things uh, and Paul Dickey did the uh, Paul Dickey did the did the recipe for this beer if you don't know who Paul Dickey is he uh, He's a revered brewmaster here in Ontario. He ran, uh, uh, I can't, I can never say it right, uh, Chester, Chestershire uh, Valley, um, and makes up, he, a lot of breweries that start up here have him as their, as a guy that helps them in their first few, uh, first few things, arch brewing coming to, uh, coming to mind and stuff like that. Uh, brewed at Wellington. Now, uh, I have seen a lot of talk on, uh, some chat boards in Nova Scotia and New Brunswick in the Maritimes about why this wasn't made in the Maritimes, why it wasn't made in a Nova Scotia brewery, because on the show, you know, the, they, they drink a lot of propeller and stuff. Why wouldn't they use a, 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 a more, uh, local type of brewery? Well, I, I, I think, uh, this is a big brand now. I mean, the Trailer Park Boys are a national brand. Uh, I think they were probably looking... I, I mean, I'm not trying to put words in their mouth, but I, I would assume that they were looking for a more a more central location. And I mean, yeah, Ontario... Guelph, Ontario is only about... Uh, well, how long did it take Nick to drive here? 18 hours? Only like 18 hours difference via vehicle from Nova Scotia, New Brunswick. But, uh... That's still 18 hours more. We have less taxation on our beer. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to assume that they were able to find a brewery here with more capacity available than uh, in Nova Scotia. Not that I think that uh, that there's breweries here that aren't near full capacity. But if you have not been to Wellington and seen their gigantic fermenters that are like three and a half stories high, uh, yeah, they have, they have some extra uh, capacity. Uh, so, Freedom 35, I guess we should get into this, we've talked way too much. I turned off this light because it makes this camera turn me into a yellow thing, it doesn't like the, uh, the fluorescent light, so I'm going to try and read this. I am legally blind for anyone that's new to the channel, so uh, forgive me while I go like this because I can't read shit. I'm going to put my... Oh yeah, shameless plug, Albino Rhino Beer Festival, May 27, 2017. From 11 a.m. till 7 p.m. at 209 Ridge Road North, Ridgeway, Ontario. 40 craft breweries from here in Ontario. 12 food vendors. All my proceeds go to the Ronald McDonald House of South Central Ontario, which used to be uh, Hamilton, Ontario. Uh, wouldn't it be great if Bubbles and them would come? I know they're not going to, but wouldn't that be awesome? You could come help raise some money for... Yeah, you guys wouldn't do it. Uh, anyway, 5% uh, alcohol. There's a lot of writing on here, but as I said, I'm blind, so uh, keep your beer cold. It's, it's not cold. I don't drink my beer cold, so... Uh, it's a better test for you guys. Is there faults in the beer that I can pick up? Brewed by North American Craft Importers, Inc., Guelph, Ontario, Product of Canada, Water, Barley, Malt, Hops, Wheat Flakes, and Yeast. I wouldn't have uh, I wouldn't have expected Wheat Flakes in here. I'm going to say all I'm expecting out of this beer is for it to be decent. And I would say decent in a Bubbles voice, but Mike Smith does it so much better than I could ever do. Uh, got a lot of guys at my work can do it really well. I can't. I'm going to put it in this really fancy glass, though, because, I mean, why not, right? You want a fancy glass for a decent beer. It makes a decent beer even more decent. So, I mean, I was a big fan of the show uh, back when it was... Back when it was starting, I, I since they went to SwearNet, uh, I have the SwearNet movie, but I haven't really watched the Trailer Park Boys show since since then. I don't know what's going on right now. At some point, I'll get around to it. I just haven't had the time, really, to be honest with you. Um, but they, they've they gone huge. I mean, they have their own whiskey brand, which uh, Kathleen Wynn and a few other people tried to keep out of Ontario. It didn't happen. Uh, they They've made themselves... 
into something huge, and I mean, you can't fault them on that. Uh, beer, crystal clear. Crystal clear, I can see my fingers perfectly. Bright white head, it's foamy, it, it doesn't just fade away like you get from a macro beer. What I'm expecting from this is, is like I said, just a decent lager, just a, a macro-esque lager, a bougie beer. I haven't had a bougie beer in a while, but that's basically a craft beer that's trying to be a macro adjunct lager, but uh, in the craft uh, variants. Uh, so this glass was $1.50, this beer, I, I don't even remember, what is it, like two fifty? So, like maybe two ninety five, so we're looking at like under five bucks for a glass and a beer. That's pretty good. Yeah, it smells like a bougie beer. Out of the can, you get that little metallic scent, uh, Pilsner-esque out of the can. Metallic, earthy, slight uh, Euro lager scent. What, what I basically was expecting to get. Out of the glass, uh, I'm not really getting that tinniness or that Euro lagerness. It's a br it has a nice a room to breathe. I'm just getting a little bit of a a grassy, earthy uh, back end on it. Let's try it. Cheers. Okay. So first and foremost, is there any faults in this beer? None. And I mean, I think I respect the Trailer Park Boys Freedom 35 more than I respected, uh, more than I respected the Tom Green Milk Stout. Uh, I, I grew up in Ottawa. I, uh, I lived a couple blocks away from Tom Green when he was growing up. And, uh, he, he's a couple years older than me for sure, yeah, but, uh, I still grew up in that area and I saw a lot of the things he did. So when the, when the, uh, when the Tom Green beer came out and I heard it was a milk stout, I expected to get punched in the face with uh, with just a something offensive out of that beer, just just something. But it was the most down to earth, down to earth, uh, pleasurable pass around anybody type of milk stout. It had, it wasn't in your face at all. It didn't have any glaring flavors or anything like that. This is a lot like that. It's, it's very simple, it's very subtle, it's very uh, crushable, if you will, and I know a lot of beer writers, a lot of beer drinkers, a lot of beer people hate that word crushable because, you know, they're like, oh, it just means you're going to drink it without thinking. Well, it, that's what I'm pretty sure this beer was meant for, is just crushing, and this beer could be crushed. There's nothing wrong with it. Its price tag puts it j uh, around the same as a macro beer, and uh, to to the high end of macro beers to the low end of craft beers is where this uh, this is priced. Uh, which is is the perfect price for a crushing beer, too, to be honest with you. Um, well, a crushing beer that is keeping money in Canada. Uh, it is... It's it's such a different beer to me than, than that at the same time, because I didn't expect this to be anything but just okay. I mean, what else would you want, right? I mean... The Trailer Park Boys are the the show is funny. It's it's not really offensive. So I mean, it's not trying to be offensive at least. It's it's trying to be tongue in cheek a lot of the time, and they they succeed at it. They have some great characters with some great uh, great stuff going on. And this beer, I would expect to kind of be just like that, just an easy to go to beer. And I know there's a lot of people in the beer industry too that hate the show. That's fine. You you don't have to like the show. I'm getting older now, I don't like it as much as I used to, I still like the show. I don't mind this beer. Is it because I like the show? No, it's not because I like the show, because really I, I want to hate this beer because I want to make fun of it. No, I don't. I don't even give a shit, to be honest with you. It's a drinkable beer. A little bit of grapefruit, a little bit of cut grass, a little bit of lemon very easy drinking. There's just those, those little bits of hop flavor to make a craft beer a craft beer drinker happy, and not enough flavor to offend a macro beer drinker. This is exactly what they needed to make. This is exactly what they should have made, which is a beer that's a crossover beer, a beer that people can like whether they are fans of... Uh, this is the thing, right? Whenever we whenever we talk about TV shows or singers or bands or anything making a beer, it's 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 always a niche beer usually, or uh, it's it's made really really mainstream, and then the craft guys don't like it at all. This is a beer that's right in the middle, where the craft guys can enjoy it, 
and where the uh, mainstream guys can enjoy it. And that's exactly what you want to do. That's the great thing about having Paul make your recipe is he's made it subtle enough. Uh, hopefully this continues to be made and hopefully as it's continuing to be made it's going to be able to be kept uh, kept as consistent. Whether or not it will be, I, I don't know. Uh, but where it is right now, I don't mind this. And it's not cold. I don't keep my beer cold. I keep my beer at basement temperature. Um, well, my basement temperature. So this is probably sitting at about... 12 degrees right now. There's no faults in it. I wouldn't expect it with Paul brewing it. I wouldn't expect it with, uh, the weird thing, okay, uh, I don't know if Wellington has changed their, changed their policy since they got their new president, uh, rest in peace to their old president, but Wellington has a house yeast that has a telltale biscuity flavor on the back end. This beer doesn't have that biscuity flavor. Which is kind of weird to me. I I would have, I was expecting it. That's what that's one of the reasons I thought it was just going to be decent. I figured it was going to have maybe a little bit of hop flavor, a little bit of sweetness, and then a biscuity flavor. I get a, a more hoppiness than I thought I would get, but still, it's very subtle, and I get a little bit of sweetness, but I'm not getting that biscuity flavor. Nice effervescence, nice beer. You know what? I'll give it a 7 out of 10. I would buy this again. It's a very decent beer. You get this cold, you could put this back all the time. Thank you guys for watching. That was uh, Trailer Park Boys Trailer. Well, the Freedom 35 Trailer Park Logger. Trailer Park Boys Logger. From the heart of the park. Bye, guys. Oh, Rafari.